and welcome to Brandstand, the weekly destination for all that you want to know about the ad, media and marketing world. I'm P. Karunya Rao and I will take you through the latest happenings and trends in Brandland. So let's get started and take a look at the top news of the week. Digital payments platform Freecharge has announced the appointment of Govind Rajan as the CEO of the company. Govind joined Freecharge in August 2015 and is currently the Chief Operating Officer at Freecharge. In his previous stints, Govind was the Chief Marketing Officer B2C at Bharti Airtel and concurrently also served as the CEO for Airtel Money. In a related move, Kunal Shah, currently the CEO of Freecharge, will now be the Chairman of the company. Kunal Shah is also the founder of the company along with Sandeep Tandon. In April 2015, Snapdeal had acquired free charge in the biggest deal that the e-commerce sector has seen in India till date. iProspect India, the end-to-end -end digital agency from the Dentsu Ages Network, has beefed up its display team with the appointment of Mihir Mehta as director, Display Media. Mihir joins with over six years of experience in the digital industry, previously holding the position of digital media head at Worldwide Open at Reliance Entertainment Digital. Recognized as one of the top 50 most influential digital media professionals in 2015 by World Marketing Congress, his portfolio of achievements include increasing revenue and improving brand awareness through digital platforms for brands in India and abroad. Publicis has announced the appointment of Suraj Pomra as Executive Vice President for the Publicis Capital Mumbai Operations. In this role, Suraj will oversee all operations of Publicis Capital in Mumbai while reporting in to Hemant Mishra, CEO of Publicis Capital. Starting with Trikaya Gray in Kolkata, his tryst with advertising has taken him through DDB Mudra, J. Walter Thompson, Publicis Ambience and even the rare entrepreneurial experience of founding and running a startup agency. He has managed brands like Mariko, Citibank, Kodak, Indian Oil, Bisleri, Reliance Infrastructure, Meru and more. Lookup Media has announced the appointment of J. Walter Thompson as their advertising agency. The account will be handled out of the agency's Bangalore office and the campaign will be spearheaded by Senthil Kumar, Chief Creative Officer of J. Walter Thompson. J. Walter Thompson will comprehensively handle the ATL mandate of Lookup Media, working towards creating campaigns that will help form an emotional connect and brand recall among the consumers. Lodestar UM has added another win by bagging the media duties of Saregama. Recently, the agency had won the media duties for Zivami and Simply Learn. Lodestar UM is part of the IPG network. Saregama is the custodian of over half of all the music ever recorded in India. Saregama India Limited owns the largest music archives in India, one of the biggest in the world. After establishing its supremacy in India's music scene, Saregama has now expanded into other areas of entertainment like publishing, television software and digital content. This week we're back with our monthly series of Brandstand Conversation. An exciting round of discussion conducted by our consulting editor Pradyuman Maheshwari with global industry captains Mike Florence, Ralph Barnett and our very own R. Balki, reflecting on the standards of creativity in Indian advertising on the sidelines of the judging of the Curious Creative Awards where they were jury foremen. I have here with me Ralph Barnett of CPN Natro, R. Balki who is the chairman of the Mullen Low Group and Mike Florence, so from the, from the entries that you have seen and from the judging that you have done, what do you think is the state of Indian creativity? So for, to give some context from the work that I've seen in the UK or in America or globally it can, uh, the entries here are as good as any other stage uh, that, I, that I've seen. As ever there's lots of work that comes in and it takes time to find the gems and the cream rises to the top. But of you know the the work here is good is good enough as anywhere else, and it could easily play out on the world stage. And I think some of the work that we saw here out over the last three days will shine in other um, global uh, award ceremonies too. Ralph, what is your view? Yeah, I tend to agree with Mike. There's a, there's a great standard of of caliber of work. I'm not sure the depth of work is quite there compared to other markets, but. Certainly there's a, there's a great spectrum of um, fantastic work and certainly they'll, they'll do well internationally. Palki, I asked this question because in the context of the Goa Fest Abbey where we did not have any Grand Prix at all and uh, uh, 
the the mention was that the work this year is not of the part of international level so would you agree uh, with that view or uh, is it otherwise uh, i think the one uh, um, like you were saying uh, the, the the percentage of the gems or the kind of work that you're going to be talking about is always the same in most kind of award shows it's all about sifting through a lot of stuff before you get there so 10% if you get to the the number of 10% itself is huge and that's that's the standard in most award shows also i think uh, both abbeys and you know, it's a funny kind of thing in india uh, i don't think it's all the agencies are represented you know either in the abbeys or the curia so that also is not a true reflection of what is the work that has happened this year it's what's the work that's been entered into these award shows that's quite different from what's really happened but but do you do, would you say that in international awards that is truly indicative of the work of a certain country or globally because i think a lot of people do not there's a lot of work in a country that appeals to a certain country which you don't enter internationally uh, only because it won't have the kind of significance that a jury of that uh, nature so i believe that i don't think any award show should be taken as an indicator of how good a country is or not i think the country's work will speak for itself for the country and award show is a different ball game it's to kind of measure different things it's not to be taken as the benchmark and the you know the the indicator or the thing of what where a country stands in the in the global uh, area of creativity it's not that it, i always believe that it's uh, it's 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 a it's a purpose by itself and there is some work which we all appreciate which people also appreciate uh but it's not to be taken so seriously it's one night of fun is what i always say and let's keep it at that we've known that you have your views on the judging process is followed at the creative awards what is your view of uh, uh the judging that happened at curious awards you were there dnad recently see i think uh, i think we're all struggling i think if you ask any person all of us would like to get an ideal award show which truly reflects uh what 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 uh, uh how advertising should be done and what's the most creative solution for a particular problem that we all kind of face i don't think it's possible to ask a jury for, for uh, to to be in a room for 4 days and look at 2000 entries and actually have people deeply think about every entry and it's it's a very difficult complex process so you got to take it with a pinch of salt number 1 uh or you make it like um, uh you know so expensive that uh, really agencies spend a lot of time in thinking about what should be entered and what is truly great and what should not be you know what should be sifted in the agency itself I mean, there must be ways to kind of really get the better work here today what's happening is people just send a lot of things which i don't even think should be entered should be put up on the agency walls you know and people send it for award shows uh maybe maybe the the barriers for not sending it are, are not there mike do you agree i do agree i don't think that's just uh, these awards i think that's indicative of all award show that people um what want, want to be seen to be entering and even if they haven't got the quality of work that's required they'll enter it anyway that makes it harder for us as judges to we have to sift through more um however what it does do is it when you do find gold it really stands out so after you know 3 days of judging there's a wall there's a lot of work and then when we came I was thinking what was the good stuff when we came back to the shortlist and it's like right there is good stuff and it actually there's some really good stuff here but i do think you're right i think that the process of self filtering or the, the way that uh, different agencies across the world enter awards they need to take a little bit more pride in what they enter as opposed to just entering it for the sake of entering i think well what is, what is your view internationally how is it uh, how how are awards looked at you've got to look at every award show on its own merit celebrating its own unique creativity whether it's in india england australia wherever it is and That's what's really got me excited this year is to come along and see the cultural context and and the uniqueness of the Indian market and I'm looking at it through that lens. I I don't want to be looking at it as how does this country represents um the power of their creativity versus another country. For me, um it's just a a great celebration of how India um see their creative. Any significant trends that you that you that you would spot from the work that you've seen uh, in the digital category yeah i think one of the one of the trends that i'm seeing is uh a, a real development in in branded content and that using the beautiful indian storytelling capability and using that to harness really powerful messages and then pushing them out to make impact balki what do you think about any any significant trends that you see 
you know, today cases and the, the way we write case studies, how many million people have, have been affected has become a big thing, it's a trend. So what we do today, we, we knew that before certain kinds of work used to appeal to juries. We are using almost Indian award shows to test out uh, whether what will stand, um, you know, uh, a good chance in this award show, this award show. And, and I see that happening a lot. And I see a lot of uh, rural communication, communication for the uh, either unfortunate or somebody helpless or somebody, you know, a victim or somebody, some very big social cause that's been tackled from a very urban perspective uh, using the rural audience to appeal to a globe that has a certain view on social issues itself. Okay, so I feel that I don't know how many rural people are actually seeing this. I think it's urban people talking to urban people about a rural audience and trying to impress themselves about um, a social cause. A lot of it is what I see that. And it's a very dangerous trend because again we are creating a lot of communication thinking this is what maybe a global audience will like. And do you think the social cause advertising is possibly being done for, uh, 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 for, for doing well on the award circuit? Sometimes, um, actually most of the times, but there are some which are very genuine, uh, but most of the time yes. And in, in the process, what has happened is the, the, the core idea of advertising on building a brand and the, uh, it reflecting the philosophy of a brand has kind of been given a go-by? No, actually that's happening on, on the side. We just believe it's slightly beneath our dignity to kind of just look at an ad and say, I just did that ad, yeah, it's just a 30 second spot in, uh, how can you, okay. in, in the area of we've all grown, we should have cases, we should actually see how this idea goes across this medium and that medium and how it's affected millions and how we get a program into some village, how do we can, you know, everything has become larger than life. But actually on the ground, it's not larger than life. It's one small village which, which is being taken for a case study. It's not affected more than 20 people, any of the activation. And the only thing most people see is the ad still. Right. But we're trying to make that ad much bigger than what it is. Uh, I'd just like to f firstly build on that point too. So I do agree with that. But what I do see here, so I work in the UK and I do see a lot of global work. I do, however, it, although people are using calls related marketing to get the ear of the judges, I do see opportunity to, for advertising to be used as a superpower in India because there are problems out here, uh, such as the woman's voice or pollution, and actually a brand that's got a right to do so can help make the world better. And it, so, so, and I really, you know, normally advertising, I think, sometimes makes the world worse. And actually, it can be used to make the world better, uh, and we can all feel better about ourselves potentially. But I, to see it to the C point three, rather than thinking about it just as a case study, they think of see it through and stick to it. So on that note, uh, the aerial share the load work. One I thought was great. It's there's a re there's a reason why aerial involved. You know, there's a cause related issue. But then in terms of the media, back to your question how they innovated uh, in their out use of outdoor experiential activity, the labels on the shirts, all of it was great and there was some real out of the box thinking and that whole campaign was just, it was just a really good holistic campaign that ticked all the boxes.